What is up, Internet world, and welcome to Accelerate. I'm Mike Van Hout, that's Ian McAlpine, and today we bring the all new Range Rover SV. This is the most expensive Range Rover that you can possibly buy. It's called the SV, and it stands for Special Vehicle. I kid you not. Special Vehicle Operations. This is beautiful, and this is my favorite truck, besides the Porsche Cayenne GT. That's designed for performance. And this is designed for ultimate luxury. Yes, I would buy this over the Maybach. And some people would hate that answer or opinion, but to me, it's amazing. So let's get to some interesting points about it. If you live in Canada, this is an expensive truck for a reason. Here we go. Are you ready? $275,000 is what you have to pay when you walk into the dealership. But then the government stops you and says, hey, we need 10% for luxury tax. It's actually 20% of the difference between 100K and the price of the vehicle. So it's 20% of $175,000 or 10% of $275,000, whichever is less. Then you have 13% tax on top of that. So by the time you cut this big check for this Range Rover SV, it's almost $360,000. Welcome to Canada. So we're used to seeing SVR and SVA and now again SVO, but what does it all mean? Well, it's an amplified version of the full-size Range Rover that's more luxury, more personalization, and more just being a Range Rover owner where you feel like you're just wearing the best suit money can buy. But what about trim levels? What kind of trims can you get in this SV? Well, you can walk down the path of two distinct personalities, inside and out. The first one is called Serenity. So the Serenity is more pure luxury with this front grille that is in metal plated Atlas silver, as well as the techno bronze around it. Whereas if you're looking for that all black look, this is what you want in the Intrepid. However, that's just for the style. What about the size? Well, you can get in a standard wheelbase as well as the long wheelbase, but it doesn't matter on which platform or style you pick. Both ways, your chauffeur is gonna love you because he is driving a V8. But then what about the P's? Mike, I don't see P400 on the back of this Range Rover. And that is because it's called a P615PS, yep. It's a P615. In the 2024 Range Rover SV. Oh baby, this V8 makes 607 horsepower and 553 pound feet of torque. Now I will hit the mode so I can get in the drive mode and I want dynamic, everything turns red, the car drops a little bit, foot on the ground, whoa, whoa, Johnny. Okay, wow, the brakes, I have to hold the brakes down, oh, the power with my left foot and go. Ooh. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? 4.73, so about 4.7, 4.8 is what you're getting out of the 600 horsepower full-size Range Rover. Now, obviously this does weigh a ton. Like there's no way this thing is a lightweight whatsoever. It has so much premium built inside it. Hold on, let me go into comfort. So much premium built inside it that obviously this is gonna weigh a lot of weight, but hey, it's all good. Because actually, when you wanna move this thing, it's when you're rolling, it's not off the line. So I'm rolling here, I'm doing about 30 miles an hour or 50K, foot on the ground. And now this train just pushes me forward. And there I am, 70 miles an hour that quick. So once it's moving, then it's easier to push this mass versus like off the line. It's like, oh, it's trying to push, push an elephant. Like when the elephant's moving, it's quick. But to move the elephant takes forever. 
That is a good analogy, Mikey boy. That's the Accelerate 0 to 60 test, and wow, that's faster than a Lexus LC500. Whoa. So if you are an SV client, you get to choose any paint color that is available on the regular Range Rover. But why would you? Because you have 14 additional paint colors available to you. And if you want that full bespoke experience, well, you can do something called sample to match paint, which means you can pick any color on the planet, you give it to Range Rover, and they will match that color and put it on your new SV. To the front, obviously very, very similar to the regular Range Rover. You're not gonna notice much of a difference between this and the regular one. The end. On the side, not much of a difference than the regular one besides these 23 inch wheels. They're sweet, but the big difference here, if you are looking to have that exclusive feel, is this piece right here. It says SV with a circle around it, which indicates, I assume, O for special vehicle operations. Now, everything else is beautiful. I do love this. Obviously, there's not a huge difference between the regular one and this, aesthetically speaking, but I wanna focus on this thing right here. This is what I love about the full-size range. There is no trim here. You see how flush this is at every level. It's very, very tight. And I know it's not a big deal, but when you look at this thing aesthetically, having no trim on the bottom here is absolute money. And look, you even get a cool puddle light. And it also does one special feature. It gives you a tan with its UV light. Look how beautiful this vehicle is on every angle. There's not one ugly angle. And I've walked around this thing like 400 times because I'm actually in love with the Range Rover. In general, I've always loved them. Obviously the old stuff where not reliable whatsoever and they've gone through a lot of different, let's call them entities, to hold onto the brand tightly. But this one is so beautiful, I love it. Like look how clean this glass wraps around. It's a curved rear glass and it's so clean and tight. Black everything up top. But let's focus on the back of this SV. You've got two fins up there and the left one has a rear view mirror camera built into it. You have your translucent third brake light and underneath you have your wiper hidden. So it gives this area a very, very clean look. You have the Range Rover in all black, the SVO badge, and then this dark piece of chrome like I talked about because this is the Intrepid. And then this part right here is what gets everybody's attention. It's a very wide curved rear end, but having these skinny backlit LEDs are just, oh, it just makes you feel wealthy in every single way. Then you have this rear bumper, but look how it's designed. It actually flares out on the corners here. There is, of course, safety lights built into the left and right of this bumper. And on the bottom, you have a tow hitch. And with 553 pound-feet of torque and this tow hitch, you can tow 8,200 pounds. Inside the Range Rover SV. So the themes I was talking about really play out inside the cabin versus the outside especially all this dark chrome, it's everywhere and it's very, very premium. It's just magic to look at with your eyes. And then when you close your eyes, everything you touch is all leather and soft and supple and premium. Like even these seats, and when I say like even these seats, I don't mean it in a bad way whatsoever. They're just rounded like a big Michelin tire. Wait, we're not sponsored by Michelin. The big Vertestein tires, they're just nice and bubbly to hold and touch and feel and oh, they're so comfortable. When you open your eyes though, it's modern. These screens have great, great contrast and pixelation that I can see very, very clearly. You just have to look at it with your own eyes. And it's quick with your fingers and the layout is excellent. They've nailed it finally. And the direction of where it's pointed is exactly where I'd want it to be. It is not flat. It is curved upwards and it's perfect for me and the passenger. But onto the real stuff. There are three memory seats when I'm in the driver. Now the joke is obviously I'm not going to be driving. I'm going to be sitting in the back there because it's amazing. But when I am driving, there could be three of me. Now I will tell you, these mirrors are pretty small. They're not big at all. And it's 
cool on the outside, but when you're driving it, you kind of want a bigger mirror. That's the one like drawback when I was driving this to kind of look at these mirrors. They're really, really small. Anyways, everywhere else you touch though, back to that, is all nice and leather. Even at the bottom of the door panel is nice and soft leather. It has most more padding than most vehicles do in the center armrest. Like, take this Camry that we have this week. This padding right here is more than that Camry's armrest where your elbow goes. Even the top here has stitching in this gray leather. Even the handle is premium. Ugh, there's so much niceness here. Anyways, heads up display. You have this Meridian signature sound system. The upper dash is nice and thin and premium and it waterfalls over these thin vents. And you have two buttons over here. One for what looks like the top and one that looks like the bottom. And therefore your two glove boxes, your upper glove box and your lower glove box. And the gap between them has space for this thin ambient light that you can change in any color as you wish. But speaking of changing, there are no buttons left. Everything is all on the screens in every way. The only buttons you have left is basically this park button and the start and stop button. And then a few buttons on your steering wheel, but they're not really buttons. There's a little slider for your volume, which is still sweet, and a cruise control faster and slower button that you toggle up and down. Everything else is simply all just touchies. Over here, when you slide this panel back, you have your wireless charger, not the greatest position in the world. You have to take your phone, you've got to slide it in. You have to remember, people use their phones a lot. And when you use your phone a lot, you don't want to be tucked away. You want it to be very accessible. Now, at the same time, you want to be able to hide everything so this dash looks very minimalist because that's the direction Range Rover has gone, or the world, pretty much. You do have some storage here, and then you also have one USB-C there. And behind that, you have another thing that you can slide and push because this little cup holder thing, you can slide back and you have more room underneath, very similar to a Tesla Model S. And then you can see you have two more USB, one USB and one USB-Cs. Now you slide this back and you slide this other panel back and this panel and you have a completely flat center console. When you lift up the actual armrest, you have a fridge with two increments of coolness and this little pad here for coins. When I put this back, I want to tell you about a great feature and it's this guy here. They've had this armrest since like the dawn of time and this thing never leave me, please stay with me forever. This is what makes me feel like a king and this is what makes any Range Rover owner in the past and future owner feel like kings and queens. And then the steering wheel, nice and soft. It is dual tone. And listen to these paddle shifters. They are real metal, no plastic here. I just love everything about this. I don't know how they're gonna improve this truck in the next generation, to be honest. Maybe add some buttons. No, <laughs> no, because nobody keeps this thing for 20 years. Three years, four years, see you later. The new one. Welcome to the back seats of the Range Rover. <laughs> So there are two sizes you can get like we talked about. You can get the regular size, which is what this one is, or you can get the long wheelbase. So when I get in, obviously it's gonna feel a little bit tight here because I had been sleeping in the front seat. So this is the room you get, still a lot of room. But if you have not known of the Range Rover brand, especially the Range Rover full size, they've always been really tight in the back, especially when you get these thick monster seats, just nowhere else to put them except for it in your face. But this thing is just magical because everything is powered, starting with the cup holders. Yep, you got it. There's a fixed screen right here. And when I press this button, so it's on the left hand side here, I press this cup button and the cup holders open up to expose them. Look at how crazy this is. It's wild. I press this button here, it slides forward and you get two cup holders. Huh, that's wild. And then what about this armrest? I pull this up and bam, I have two little lines here for straws and I have a mirror. How interesting is that? I wonder what the straws are for. Anyways, you close this down here, then you have five buttons, starting with the seats, which is obviously the most important part on where I'm sitting because where I'm sitting, I have a full out lay down seat. So I hit adjust and I press recline. It takes 
a couple seconds or so, but my seat fully reclines. This seat goes all the way forward, which is the passenger seat. And now you can really see the stitching on this passenger seat. You can see on the back here, this material. Now this material is called Cloud Gray Ultra Fabrics. Now as this thing is doing its movement here, I press these buttons just to get that little extra experience where this leg rest comes all the way up. Because for me, I don't need that front leg rest. Cause see this thing pops down so you can basically put your legs on it or at least this version here, but I'm too tall being five foot nine. So if you're five foot three, five foot two, this is perfect. If you're six foot, forget about it. You cannot extend your legs out. This is more just really to relax and you know, kind of chill out. If you think this is exciting, there's actually one better, but I'll get to that in a second. Now back to this little menu here, I can adjust the climate, obviously where the air is flowing, the vents, the air quality. I can adjust the lighting back here. What type of color do I want? Do I want classic dynamic red, ocean blue? And obviously you have lots of different colors, including something called my color. You can obviously link it to this mode that your drive modes in. In this specific case, it is dynamic and it's dynamic red. Now to task lighting, how intense do you want this light to be? All this lighting around me. Anyways, back to reality, which is the blinds. Everybody has access to that. This is how you open and close your blind. I simply just slide my finger up and then this blind does close. You can tell it is really, really good quality. The texture of this fabric is different to this leather up here. And finally are the 13.1 inch rear screens. You can adjust the brightness of them. You can switch them on or off. So what can you do with them? Well, you have two HDMI inputs as you see. They are touch screens, so when I touch them, you get more features. Well, obviously as far as colors and lighting and all that stuff goes. And you get these guys. These are SV. Oh, look how cool this is. They are headphones. Of course, they are Bluetooth SV. How cool is that? What up? Now, when the center armrest is down, you do have a ski pass that you can pull down here and you can slide skis through. But if you don't want to have this, can you just simply just lift it up and get out the way? The answer is no, it's not fixed. There is a trick and it has to do with your finger. Up you go. It says remove any obstacles. Ain't no obstacles here, man. Just you. So get out of my way. So if you've never seen the trunk of a Range Rover open up, it's a split trunk. You have the higher upper and the lower lower, I guess, if you want to call it that. You have really a bench here, so you can come and you can sit on your Range Rover. Also, when the key is on you and you walk up the vehicle and you come in this area, this will automatically open up because it expects you to be holding something and not having to dig into your wallet or purse or bag or wherever to find the key. Speaking of the key, this is what it looks like. Yep, I took out the bottom half, but there's an SVO on the back of your key, letting that distinct owner know that you paid big money. And when you do this and you sit down like me, and if you're a taller person, which most people are, you actually have a backrest. You can lift this up and bam, you can actually sit on this thing with a little bit of a backrest. So let's close this up and show you another sweet feature about this Range Rover. Look at this. You have a full size exact matching spare. This is vitally important because you know how embarrassing it is to be driving around with that yellow colored donut that says 80 kilometers or 45 or 50 miles or whatever. That is super embarrassing, but you'll never have to be embarrassed when you're driving this. Now you have a few buttons on the side here on your Range Rover and one of them is an automatic rear parcel shelf. Check this out. I push this button and it takes it away. Look at this. How cool is this? So you're on the top floor of your full size Range Rover and you want to load something into the trunk. Well, you have two buttons here, one to raise it and one to lower it. So let's lower it and drop this thing as low as we can get by hitting this button. Come on, Range. Oh. Let's go. Down to the basement. I just love slammed Range Rovers. Now, before I jump into the front seat, I want to show you on the trunk lid itself, you have a spot to put your cup or bottle right there. Now, there's nothing to pop your bottle. That was on some of the Ford Broncos that we have reviewed in the past. This is more for luxury because somebody will open the bottle for you. But the fact that it has it and you can sit on the back here is a real good feature. I'm glad that they've designed it this way. Not a lot of vehicles have it like this. Everything's just like one big tailgate. Oh,
Now, if you've driven Range Rover full size in the last five years, I will say they pretty much drive exactly the way you expect them to. Very soft, very quiet, ultra luxurious, very limo-ish, and there's not many vehicles out there that, that drive like Range Rover. So let's take the Escalade as an example. The most premium, high-end, domestic truck you can kind of buy. And it's definitely more bulky, more top-heavy feeling. This is more sporty feeling. It feels like it has like a little bit of BMW underpinnings here around corners. It just is beautiful to drive. It is definitely boaty. There's no doubt about that. And obviously the Escalade is a lot more bulk on the top and it's bigger obviously so maybe not the best comparison but there isn't much like this you can't say g-wagon because the g-wagon is way more raw than this it's way louder you close the door it feels like you've just smashed somebody with a baseball bat in the head it's just totally different there's not many cars that pop in my brain that drive like this that feel this majestic opulent not much also this rear wheel steering is ultra aggressive this is really designed for pulling itself out of really tight parking spots like this 360 radius is very very tight with this rear wheel steering now I will say with the build of electrification and how easy it is to make vehicles now they can put all their efforts into the actual cabin, the quietness, the steering, and then just slap on a bunch of electric motors and a battery. And that's what the whole Asian market is doing. I mean, the Chinese, when they hit North America, it's almost game over. That's why you have to have all this red tape for them to come here because they dominate. And that's where the future is scary and the branding is so important. And that's what Range Rover does. So as long as they can hold the fact that they make the most opulent, high-end, luxurious product from a branding perspective, you'll always have this type of vibe. You'll always have this. There's only one way to drive a Range Rover full size, and that's in comfort and cruising. Speeding is a huge waste of time. We only do these zero to 60 times just to give people some sort of understanding of how much horsepower something has to make to go how fast, and depending on weight, gear ratios, that kind of vibe. But really, there's only one way to drive it, and it's this way. Just scratch your goatee or beard if you have one, and just cruise with the lean and the chill back. It's the only way. Or you gotta be sitting in the back. So that's it for my review on this 2024 Range Rover full-size SV. Thanks for the support, as always, from Mike and Ian.